you know, I've been through a lot in my life, but I have finally come to terms with the fact that Trader Joe's vanilla meringues will be my undoing. <laughs> Y'all, I don't think that the Sephora savings event is actually over yet. Also, I just bit the inside of my cheek. It's a great way to start a video. We're gonna be working with a bunch of stuff today that's not at Sephora. That was like the whole theme of this video that I kept teasing because I've been sent so much cool stuff lately that isn't at Sephora. And the Sephora savings event just comes and like, you know, lays a big egg on our channels for like that couple of weeks, both times in the year. We're gonna see if I can find my words in this video. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna name a bunch of stuff and we may or may not use everything that I speak about today because it is a lot. Like it's, you know, I have too many eyeshadows to put on my eyes at once kind of thing, so. We just have to do it. You know what I mean? We have to do it. We have to put it on my face. I'm gonna have to deepen it with something because it is like mime level white. And this is the shade two in the Cushion Debuté from Gucci that I bought. And I've just been trying to figure out how to make it work. A cushion, it's very challenging to mix with a deepener, but we're going to try and do it because science. And I have to make it look somewhat decent in order to even, you know, be on camera with it. Otherwise it will ruin everything because it's the foundation. But actually, we might do one thing that's at Sephora because I think I kind of mentally avoided it. Kelly Gooch just put out a video, I say just put out a video, I binged a bunch of her videos recently and one of them was talking about stunt beauty and Milk Makeup has been all in on stunt beauty lately because it's where the money is. Things that have kind of shock value on screen and making products that are specifically, you know, like the old Farsali unicorn drops or whatever, like it's all just meant to get you to stop scrolling and we will see whether their foaming primer does anything. I have, this is in no particular order apparently, the new eye paints from Persona. Yeah, I also have the new shades in the sticks from Victoria Beckham that I should at least swatch all of them, you know? But there's a really good possibility, depending on these colors, that I could actually combine them. Sigma! It was one of the biggest sponsors of the New Orleans trip that I just went on, and so I have a lot of Sigma stuff, but as you just saw, lots of eye things. This, hope please, is the new Cool Neutrals palette, but I don't think that it's out yet, and I think that we're gonna talk about it when it's out. They did, though, give me some of their older things, I just, older things, like things that have been around for a while. I have their powder here, which I did use while I was on the trip, and I like it a lot, so I'm gonna use that today. Ah, there's the under eye corrector. And then I also have this YSL bronzer that I bought that I really don't, I'm not sure about this color. I'm not sure about this color, but we will see. Oh my God, and we also have new stuff from RMS. This isn't n new, like this isn't their new bronzer. I just picked out my bronzer shades yesterday. So those are gonna ship soon and then I will review them, but they did offer some gifting and I sprung for the two coral shades that I've been gagging over. So this is my tie, which I think almost rounds out my collection. I think I have all but one now of these blushes. These are the Redimension Hydra Powder blushes and I've yet to use this. I've only swatched it, I'm very excited about it. And I think I'm gonna use that and then top <laughs> with this, which I have used a lot. Oh my God, I'm obsessed with this. And I know that like influencers say that all the time, but like in my private life, I'm obsessed with this. I use it absolutely all the time. It's like the blush that I use without anything else. I'm just like a, you know, sunscreen kind of day, I will put this blush on. And this is Smile, I mean, look at it. Fluorescent Coral, it's everything. Oh, <laughs> this is so stupid. I have so much stuff. I'm so happy about it, but like I keep, like I was like, I'll just put it all here and then I'll remember to talk about it, but there's so much that I'm literally still forgetting to talk about it. I have the uh, Glaze, the lip oil from In Beauty Project. They sent two, they, you know, let me pick a couple out but this is Fruit Punch and look at this color. I know, this fluorescent coral color. This is like all the good things that are happening to me right now in a tube, so I don't know. Let's put all this stuff on my face. <laughs> also, I have got an absolute doozy whopper. Oh, is it right there? It hurts so much and like as if I needed more pain. Between my kid like kicking me in the septum twice last week. Ouch, 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 ouch. <laughs> Let's talk about this here Milk Makeup Cloud Glow. I, you know, I am not as good as like Kelly and like Lauren May at discerning and like recognizing patterns in the market. I love that their channels have both really become rich with that kind of content because I find it so fascinating. Like Kelly watches so much short form that I feel like she really has her finger on the pulse of like what's, it's not even that it's cool because she is like very validly cynical about it. She's just very aware and able to kind of name patterns and then she's like reading all this stuff about like what's, it's just, it's very, very, very fascinating and she's just such a good reason source for it. So yeah, she was talking about 
stunt beauty, essentially. Like all of these things that are not performance first, which is like what I said. I was like, oh, you know, this seems like something that is meant to be more like appealing visually and, you know, make somebody watch content. And that's the, you know, the virality is what people are more interested in, in terms of like the priority of producing a new product versus is it good? Like, we have gotten away from is it good <laughs> being the first priority of a makeup item, so it is, it's pretty dystopian, so. Doesn't smell like any, I mean, it smells like something, but it's, I don't think it's fragrance. Maybe it is. It kind of smells like sunscreen. Y'all, yeah, it does smell like sunscreen. I thought it was just like, because it's not a particularly lovely smell. Like, is that like hydrating? Yeah, actually it feels kind of nice. It does. Okay, that feels nice. It's not bad. <laughs> That's not a bad, pro I don't understand why it had to smell like sunscreen. That's not bad. That is more not bad compared to the cynicism I came into it with than this jelly blush, which is not as bad as I thought it was going to be, but it's still pretty bad. This is not bad. <laughs> it's definitely like really emollient. When I first put it on, I was like, this is nothing. But it's like really emollient. It's like kind of nice for dry skin. Oh God, being a makeup reviewer is so funny because a lot of times you're just like, yeah, I'm that person who calls it like it is and da 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 and brands should fear me. And then there are those moments where you're like, and then my honesty backfires because that's actually good and I can't lie. <laughs> like I just can't. Because <laughs> it's like my, my responsibility is like at the end of the day to y'all. And it's like, do I recommend it on the basis of it being the best primer in the world, you know, we'll, we'll see, time will tell, but it's certainly not bad. Like it feels really nice. Darn it. Darn it straight to heck. Okay. I'm going to mix together this Gucci, this Gucci foundation. So this is the cushion foundation. Oh my God. Why is it so pale? Why is she too so pale when there are like 12 shades in this? Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like it's a cushion foundation. We're happy that there are 12 shades, but that's shade two. I'm shade two in Fenty. Do you know what I mean? I'm shade two in Danessa Myrix. <laughs> like, like those are really, really great shade ranges. I'm like, okay, it is what it is. But like I said this about it when I first got it, I would have bought the next shade. Like very much would have just bitten the bullet, paid another $81 and gotten the right shade. But for the life of me, from those swatches, I cannot tell what the next right shade for me would be. I have no idea, they all look the same. They all look so light. They all look so light and just varied in nuance of like rosy or whatever. But I swear, it's like, I can't tell what the next standard deviation of depth is because they all seem like they're just kind of all the same depth. It's weird. It's really weird. I was watching Hannah's video yesterday where she tried a bunch of new stuff from Sephora and finally got around to trying the Glossier, the Cloud Paint bronzers. And she ended up buying the third shade, which is what I would have recommended she do anyway, because it's very olive. It's very like, you know, good for her skin tone. And she actually ended up really liking it. But she was like, I really love a liquid blush or a liquid bronzer because you can mix it with a foundation to deepen it. And I was like, oh, like, you know, it doesn't have to be bronzer drops. You know, it could just be a, bron a liquid bronzer, like the same damn thing. So anyway, I'm going to mix sale, sale with the Gucci and see what we're going to get some Gluchie. <laughs> <Not Gluchie. laughs> what is wrong with me? This is the, this is the issue, right? Is we're dealing with a cushion. So I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of it out. I am never this person who like does science on my channel, but I guess there's, you know, a first time for everything. That was inefficient. Everybody's just like freaking out. They're like, that's $81. It's like, I wasn't going to use it anyway. <laughs> and I'll give it to someone who's, as, when I find someone who's it tried to eat rattly Natalie. It's becoming carnivorous. When I find someone this light who is neutral, because I don't think that Hannah could wear this. It's, I don't even know if warm is the right word. I just think it would go a little bit orange on her. So that might work. That is mixed with sale. It does have a fragrance. I feel like I'm like, oh yeah, I need to actually be reviewing. <laughs> this Gucci foundation because I'm just sitting here talking about how it's like a bad shade match and all this stuff. And it's like, okay, Khaki, what's the actual formula? Like it's kind of, look at that. So pasty. It's kind of neither here nor there. 
I feel like it's got so much of the sunscreen ingredient in it that it just doesn't look like a natural color on my skin. Do you see that? It's kind of this like weird reflective haze. And no matter what I've mixed it with, it always does that. Like I've tried mixing it with several different bronzy products. And like, I think that that's a good shade match. I think that we achieved something realistic, but it still has this really odd, like surreal shift because of the Gucci. And since I've tried it with so many other things, I know that it's not the other things that are doing it. And also <laughs> this really nice luminous finish that I'm getting from it, that's the glossy. <laughs> So I mean, it's like pretty easy when something, I don't like to say something is good for the price or bad for the price or whatever, but like, I think when you make a cushion foundation, $81, it needs to knock everyone's socks off. And it's pretty safe to say that this is like, my socks are on. The other thing is like, is the primer doing anything? Maybe. It's not interfering with anything. I'm not mad at it. I guess we'll see. Like, I'm actually kind of mad at it because I wanted to hate it. And it's actually kind of nice. Oh, let's go in with the color corrector first from Sigma because, por qué? You don't really need very much concealer once you've used this. So I'm going to grab my little kitten paw, my Angie Hot and Flashy A506 from BK. I'm just going to Pip, pip, pip. And I mean, this is, you know, everything that you're used to from a color corrector. It just happens to come in two shades in the pan and it comes in three colorways. And it's just kind of great when you, especially with, if you have skin like mine where your skin's kind of translucent, especially like around my eyes and stuff, it's not even a matter of being blemish free or whatever. It's a matter of the fact that you can just see all my veins through my eyes and stuff. And this is just a way of not adding a ton of coverage and just kind of color correcting for it. And also like there are two. And so it's like, yeah, I can use the brighter end underneath my eyes and stuff. And then I'll put a little concealer on top if I want to, but I can also use that as almost like an eyeshadow base, the deeper one, and already start to achieve just a little bit of shadow, just a little bit. And it's, I would say very comparable to the Becca, but it's less oily. It is very castor oil based and very melty when you touch it. And this is a little more stable, but still really hydrating. I need that, you know? And I think that that's the other thing that I like about something like this versus doing everything straight in with the concealer is that concealers are just almost never, and I don't know why, but concealers are almost never able to be like this emollient on the skin and still effective as a concealer. And there's something about a brightener that I don't really know what the difference is. Okay, now we'll go in with my Tower 28 concealer. <laughs> yeah, this is a real doozy. Oh yeah, oh yeah, she's mean. She hurts a lot. She hurts like, there are pimples that hurt when you're interacting with them and you're just like, oop, reached up and touched that, I regret that. And then there are the ones that hurt when you're just sitting there and you're just like, I'm very aware of that. And also, I don't know if y'all have experienced this and I always wanna say like, I've never been formally diagnosed, but like, I don't really think I need a formal diagnosis. I experience a full range of symptoms of ADHD. <laughs> like, and I'm not hurting anybody by saying that that's probably what I have. And I don't intend to get medicated for it. So I don't really need to go get any kind of formal diagnosis. But when you have something that's kind of like annoyingly persistently painful like that, or annoyingly persistently anything, you could just be cold. But like I hurt my back the other day. And so I was like trying so hard to just like unpack a suitcase and then also get ready for bed. I mean, I was doing the ADHD twirl. You know, I was just, it was every time I moved my back hurt and it would like hard restart my brain every single time. And so it's like, that's what a zit like this does is it's like every time I just notice it, I'm like, what was I doing? You know, it just hard restarts your brain. <sighs> okay, let's go into the Sigma powder next. This is going to be, I think, kind of like a mostly powder look. She says, not remembering any of the things that we said we were going to put on my face. I vaguely think that there was a blush. There are blushes, there are. The RMS ones and it's going to be powder and then cream, so we're all good. Let's go Sigma. This is, I mean, what a pretty powder. I'm not sure how many shades this comes in, but like more than one, I think, you know, we love to see it. And I'm gonna grab this on a Refer 5 brush. Am I a huge fan of a loose powder? No, I am not. No, I'm not because I always end up putting on too much, but it won't hard pan. So, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other, you know? This one does add a touch of coverage, but I still found it to not be quite as easy to use as the Kosas. Like I accidentally forgot my Kosas and then this was in our bag and so I was using it. But you know, when I've said this before, but it's like, you'll, you'll be like, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. And then like the old option will reemerge and you go, oh yeah, no, I want that. 
and like you wouldn't have known that unless <laughs> the old option reemerged. Because I like walked into Kiki's room and she had this teeny, tiny, adorable, I had never seen the mini of the Kosa's cloud set. And it's so small, it's like a gumball. And I was like, what is that? And she was like, it's the Kosa's. I was like, can I use it? Cause I just like missed my powder so much. But I will say that new Laura Mercier, holy crap. It's really lovely. It's lovely because when you use it, it doesn't look like you put makeup on. It just looks really like it's super translucent. It actually works as a translucent powder. And so you put it on and you're just like, oh, <laughs> I guess I woke up like this. <laughs> this whole thing is like miracle, miracle powder for people who have dry skin. I would not recommend it for someone who has oily skin. You'd be like, where did it go? Is the alleged powder in the room with us? You would be very frustrated having spent $52 on it. Wow, I already crushed 30 minutes of recording time. I am really, like not on my game right now. I am, I'm so distracted. Let's go in with the YSL bronzer. I want to swatch this against a couple of other bronzers in its category because I'm confused. <laughs> Like I ordered the lightest shade, it is 01. Look at that, it's so close to my skin tone, I thought that's gonna be a fantastic bronzer. And also, I usually don't mind one that's a little bit golden, like it's pretty golden, but I'll compare it to the Gucci and then I'll also show you the Hermes because the Hermes isn't really technically a bronzer, but it's still like my favorite thing in the world. I really thought that the two shades were similar, so that's the Gucci. I knew those weren't going to be similar. Like that's so rosy and gorgeous and all times of year, just like blushy bronzer for me. But the, this is way lighter, but it's a much different undertone. So let me find the Hermes real quick. Someone told me that I can scotch tape this and get the hard pan off. So I will test that theory. That sounds great. So this is the Hermes Healthy Glow, which, you know, I thought that Chanel had the market cornered on that one. They are really similar in shade. Why does the, why did the YSL, maybe it's just that the YSL is so, just so light that it almost, like, they don't even call that a bronzer. They call that a setting powder. <laughs> I'm getting so like worked up. Why am I getting so worked up about that? That's so stupid. But like, why is the YSL so light? And like the, the one that's not even considered a bronzer is like darker. Let's put the, let's put the YSL on. I'm having one of those days where I'm like, I am alone in a room talking to a camera. You know, like I am not being transported to like, there are people watching me. I am just very much terrestrial at the moment. <laughs> you know, rare beauty. Except this, this, they call this a dry brush cleaner. Oh, it's one of those. Okay, okay, okay. I was like, all right. I mean, can you use that on a blush brush? Sure, why not? Just another thing to sit on another surface until my makeup collection inevitably eats me. Okay, why I sell, here we go. Oh, let's talk about the package. I think that it's really pretty. And I think that it goes really nicely with their mini couture clutches. It has absolutely nothing size-wise to do with it. That might annoy some people, but ooh, you know, the way that some packaging drives people crazy, I think is so funny. Like stuff that I didn't expect. Like I understand that the Hermes quad drives people crazy because it has like the two circles and the two squares. I honestly think they did that just because they knew it was gonna drive some people crazy. But what was the other one that was really bugging somebody the other day? Let me know in the comments what bugs you, what pack packaging bugs you. I know that there are a lot of products out there like that. Like the, the Glossier really bugged everybody when they came out with those eyeshadow things that was like three when there could have been four in the compact kind of thing. So I get it. Okay, like that's not bad. As powder bronzers go, it's so light. Like it almost just looks like a powder, but it's nice. You know what I mean? Like a setting powder, but it is really nice. I might end up putting on more bronzer. Girl, what is the back of your head looks ridiculous. Any hoodles. I am so flipping excited to try this. You're going to see this on me as I am seeing this on me for the first time. I have been dying for this shade. So this is RMS Mai Tai in the Redimension Hydra Powder Blush. Look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it. Oh, what? What? Ooh, okay, swatch party. Rare Beauty Joy, which is her coral shade. Oh, ooh. And also, I know I'm not showing you yet, Milani Luminoso. And if you're like Khaki, why are you so like day quill right now? I had a nutritious lunch. I haven't eaten good for me food in like six months. <laughs> so I'm like, I finally like bought real like fresh food and like prepared it for myself and ate and I feel like a million bucks. That's what's happening right now. So inquiring minds want to know, that's my tie. 
She's a lot pinker. And then that is the Rare Beauty, the new one, Joy. And then that's Milani Luminoso. I know so. Those are so similar. Interessante. Here we go. I should say, this is not my first time trying this formula. I have Hanky Panky and Maiden's Blush and French Rosé and Pre uh, the Prosecco one, yes, but Pomegranate Fizz and Crystal Slipper. <gasps> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, this is so pretty. Oh my goodness. But see, there's something about this that even though these have a shift on them, like a distinct shift on them, there's something about them that when they go on, it's just not as iridescent as the Rare Beauty. Like, I really feel like I can build the color that I want out of the RMS blushes, every last one of them, and it never gets eyeshadowy. Whereas, you know, I was watching, who else was I watching put them on? I was just watching someone this morning put on the Rare Beauty blushes where they said the same thing, where maybe it was, I, sorry, it was Kelly. I think it was Kelly. She was, she was saying, she's like, I think if I built this up as much as I would want to with any other blush, it would, it would be too much. Like it would just be too iridescent. And that was the exact same sentiment I had, whereas I just keep building this and it just keeps blurring. It's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> I can't stop looking at myself on my monitor. It's so pretty. Uh, and it's like, in a way that translates really beautifully in person. I think it would photograph well, and I think that, you know, it actually looks really good in person. It's a really, really easy formula to use, and I think that there is a kind of like shade and tone and saturation value for everybody, because even like the difference between like Hanky Panky and Crystal Slipper, they're pretty much the same color, except like one's a deeper kind of thing, or like Pomegranate Fizz took French Rosé and just like, you know, cranked it up five notches in terms of intensity. And so I feel like, you know, RMS 2.0, is doing a better job of like catering to a lot of skin tones, not just in the shades, but also in like the intensity of the shades. And I just can't say enough about this formula. Plus she's refillable. You can just buy, and they actually, so many of these products, they say they're refillable and then you can't buy the refill. This, you can just buy the refill. It's unfortunately not magnetic, but like they sell magnets. <laughs> I just built that up like crazy and it's still not overwhelming. And that is why we're going to also, cause you know, what, overwhelming is what we're trying to get to. So smile. We, you know, you know we have to add this to the coral blush smackdown, the cream coral blush deathmatch smackdown, whatever. And we'll make it kind of brief. I will only do it against the ones that are like my favorites. I won't go into all the ones that like don't really work, but you know, we have, Charlotte Tilbury, very, very similar in shade. In fact, I'm just gonna take the RMS again and like do a really nice solid swatch right there in the middle so we can see what it looks like really built up. Yeah, so it's pinker and more just neon than the Charlotte Tilbury, which is saying a lot because the Charlotte Tilbury is pretty neon. Then we have Joy from Rare Beauty, right on par, but less red, more pink. I mean, the RMS is by comparison and then you know, we have Rare Beauty and Virtue, which is going to be the nudier kind of like beige, I should say, version of a coral for like fair skin tones. And honestly, Say Beauty Cutie is like the exact same color. So that's how she shakes out very, very similarly to those. But I really like the delivery system not being a liquid. It builds more slowly and more predictably on a no makeup makeup face of makeup. I'm gonna go in with the BK106. I've like rubbed the label off of this. I'm gonna talk about Sigma while I'm using BK, but regardless, she was talking about how the bristles never come out of the ferrule on a Sigma brush because they actually have their own proprietary like thread system where like everything screws together instead of being glued together. They're really smart. <laughs> I mean, they really are. I love it. Is anybody surprised? Absolutely not. But. Mm, this just makes me really happy. I don't think we're bronze enough though. I do need a little bit of contour. I'm gonna use my Salt New York. Yes, she is just blowing free in the breeze and I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to everyone that that gives anxiety to, but it just is what it is. But yeah, this is taupe and I love her. But yeah, it's like now we've got contour and blush and no bronzer and I need, I want a gradient. You know what would solve that. That's something I wanna do. I think that that might kind of really screw everything up. Let's try it. Me, Chaos Queen. Mm. Mm. I still feel like I have kind of a mud stripe on my cheek. 
and that is not because of the contour it's because of the fact that there's not enough kind of bronzer it's too like contrasty and also i think my complexion is just an odd shade it's just a weird shade the way that we had to kind of like problem solve around that gucci i don't know at least the final thoughts will be interesting and won't be like i like it i like it i like it i'm just gonna have like a lot of a lot of, a lot of things to offer you in terms of Variety being the spice of life. Okay, let's get into eyes and see what the heck we want to do today because it, this could get this could get spicy. I don't I don't know. Let's swatch all the persona shadows and then all of the Victoria Beckham shadows and then maybe we'll make an assessment. Make an assessment. It's like two browns and then this. <laughs> It's just like not what I was expecting. Even though I remember seeing it on Trend Mood, I just like forgot exactly how vivid that pink is. It's more of a topper though. It really doesn't have a whole lot, if any, base pigment in it. All right, there's that. And we've talked about this already, y'all, but Shroom was a huge disappointment for me because it's just not what I thought it was going to be. I really thought it was gonna be a bedroomized brown for me. And it is on my kind of like warm, neutral, warm, leaning skin tone, straight up like lavender taupe. And it just doesn't work at all. It doesn't work at all. And that's disappointing, but it's, you know, it's good news for my cool tone friends who I will be passing them along to. Then we have ballet, which I think I have already rattled too much and I think it's already broken. So there's ballet. She's very sheer pink. These are the Victoria Beckham ones, obviously. And then we have cornflower, darling. Here's the thing. As tempted as I am to do blue because everybody wants something different, we have tested and tested and tested the eyewears from Victoria Beckham. And what I can say about the three new shades is just as a reviewer, they perform like you think they're going to perform and the colors are not for me this go around. I'm gonna go with one of these. I just haven't decided whether I wanna put set like a base down underneath them or not. Let's start with them just cold because you can always cover them up with a base, you know? So this is the shade, I have no idea, Oro. <gasps> Wow, it really looked underwhelming in the swatch, but that's pretty. What happens if I try and use a brush with it? Wow. Okay, and we also need to see the dry down because if the dry down is as good as the Glossier Cloud Paints, we're in business. That's a really good color. Like that's a better color on me than any of the cloud paints ever was. For whatever reason, I was just like fighting for my life with that shade range. I just like could not find any. I was like, can you all just put out like a normal color that another company would think was normal, you know, but they were just like, no, if it's going to be beige, it's going to shift blue. Oh, uh, that's so pretty. Am I wrong? That's kind of a peachy gold. <laughs> When all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail, you know, but like it's kind of a little bit, you know what it sort of reminds me of? Boy Tears. It's golder. It's definitely golder than Boy Tears and it's not as intense. Like it's not meant to be like that. I'm just saying the color is kind of giving Boy Tears from Hindash. It's pretty. It's pretty. It's not as like, it's definitely not as sophisticated of a formula as Hindash is. Like his never looks clumpy or grabs and like this is like when I get close, I'm like, ah! Okay, I didn't do a perfect job blending that, but I do kind of want to go in with this brown and see what happens because I think that now that I've seen the way that this behaves, we might get something really smoky and beautiful. Yep, 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 immediately, that's too cool for me. Well, that's what happens a lot of times where I have to do the same thing on both sides. That's Tati's rule. Tati's law, you have to make the same mistake on both sides, but it, that's what happens to me a lot of times with liquid eyeshadows that look like they're gonna be a perfect kind of like neutral to warm bedroomized brown on me. When I get them on my eye, they go cool. And it, I don't know why. Maybe it's the, you know, the color of the reflective particles or something. It just kind of looks a little bit more taupe than it does brown. But that's just why I'm not gonna keep going with that shade. In fact, I'm gonna do a little bit more of the gold. But like, I wanna swatch this this gold, this Oro, against like uh, Ciel de Ray from uh, Surat, which is like my favorite kind of gold liquid eyeshadow, or it's like a weird kind of spongy cream eyeshadow. And also against like Space Cowboy, because those are really, really similar kind of like beigey sparkles. But I'm, I'm going back in with some more of the gold because I'm just like, that brown wasn't it. And I want to see how much we can get out of it, like how much metallic we can get out of it. And for everybody who is like sad that I didn't do a blue disco eye, you're still getting a disco eye. <sighs> 
I'm glad that we went with Oro first because she's the one. <laughs> she's the one for me at least. So I'm gonna do this with my non-dominant hand because I'm all swashed up over here. But let me see real quick. This is really the kiss of death or possibly. <gasps> Yay, they don't do the thing that the Pat McGrath ones do where they just come off with spit. <laughs> they pass the waterproof test, that's fantastic. Okay, so I don't know why I've chosen Oro only here to swatch and I think it's because she's my favorite. So suddenly she's the only one that I care about, but here's Oro. And I also found Boy Tears, although my Boy Tears is empty. So we're gonna have to like scrape the sides, but eh. Boy Tears, meh. It's like barely anything. I'm not wrong about them being kind of the same shade value. It's obviously golder, like I said, but still it's like the same kind of peachy gold. Then we have the moon dust eyeshadow from Urban Decay in space. Cowboy, everybody's favorite. Not really, but you know what I mean. Move, 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 move. And then we have Surat Ciel de Ray, which is like my ideal one and done shadow. So yeah, it's right there in the family. Like we have kind of a, a range now <laughs> of different finishes that you might get in that color family. Love to see it. So yeah, it does really beg for a little bit of help maybe in one direction or another. Like I could do a little bit of the Surratt as the rest of my base. So let's try that. I'm gonna pick it up on that same brush because who cares and just use it to, you know, build around that without getting more shimmer but very similar nature of product, right? I adore these Surratt shadows. It is just very seldom that we come across a makeup item that's truly new. And like, this is truly new. Feels like amphibian skin. It's the weirdest thing in the world and I love it. Do a little bit of that under here too. Plus you know where you're putting it and you know when the brush doesn't have any on it anymore because it's like cold. <laughs> You're like, oh, I ran out. It's, I do not feel cold anymore. I think that a uh, Merit Shadow is very much called for in this situation also. Like, I just think that it would go really great in the crease. So yeah, mid-century, same brush, <laughs> because why not? I just want something brutally matte. Something that's really gonna absorb light, but stay in that same color family so that I'm not going for a ton of like depth in order to get the drama. I'm just using texture to like differentiate between the shimmer and the shadow. I'm going to put on eyeliner and mascara and everything real quick. I think I'm gonna use cinnamon today from Victoria Beckham if I can locate her because this is so warm. And then we will, I don't know, come back and talk lips because I think that I can fit all that I can fit on my face in terms of like new things today. And thank God, because someone needs to tell me to shut up. Uh-oh, y'all. <sighs> when you put eyeliner on, on top of the persona, it cracks and falls off. So don't build it as much as I did, but that also means that you can't build it as much as I did. That was a struggle. So like I said, it's cracking off. I don't really know how I feel about that because there are so many formulas out there like this, but at the same time, they've had other flaws in them that have made it so that they didn't get this far in terms of me trying them, like that I could like build them this much and stuff like that. And so I can't really speak to like, oh, would the Pat McGrath do that? I don't know. We didn't get past, it comes off with spit. You know, um, I don't think that the Lisa Eldridge ones would do this if you built them up. I don't think that they would crack and fall off. I've never used the metallic ones from About Face. I really need to, I really should because I love the matte eye paints. It's very pretty and I have to give it credit for that, but like it, it definitely tops out and starts cracking off and I haven't had that happen in a long time. Like, does it look bad? No but I'm not sure that I would know when to stop. I think two, two coats. You go to three coats, it just starts cracking off. Okay, let's do some lips. This is not even like an, oh, let's choose a lip situation because the only thing I wanna do here is make sure that I swatch this against all the kind of notoriously coral lips that I tend to use. Oh God, I have so many swatches everywhere. It's like so hard to see. Okay, so here is the Armani that I really like. This is the new Armani, no smell, but it does plump in a way. I'm not sure what the way is. Then we have the Hermes Hermesistible, which smells like apricots 
or peach rings or something, and doesn't have any sparkle to it, whereas the Armani does, and it's a little bit pinker. It's really hard to see. They're all kind of, you know, like a good amount of pigment, but swatching a lip gloss is swatching a lip gloss at the end of the day. It doesn't have any plumping to it. Then we have the one that I don't really like, which is the Givenchy La Rose Perfecto, and the reason I don't like it is not because it's not beautiful. It is. <laughs> Start to finish, it's beautiful, but the smell and the taste is just so overwhelming for me. Not everybody feels that way. The smell is actually not bad, but it tastes so, like it tastes like it smells, just of kind of like fake florals, and it's just like blech. And then we have a much different price point here. <laughs> and that is the new, to me, Glaze Lip Oil in Fruit Punch from In Beauty Project. It is so much more of like a clear, translucent, fluorescent coral. It's giving summer. It's like subtlety, subtlety who? <laughs> she's juicy, she's lovely, and it smells like Hawaiian punch. Like it is not your sophisticated, mature kind of lip gloss. I mean, the whole thing is giving all ages show. You know what I mean? <laughs> Check IDs at the door. Be that as it may, this color is amazing. It's just something you want to put on too much of. And it does taste sweet. It's so funny, like the two lip glosses in my entire collection that taste sweet are In Beauty Project and La Mer. Like, <laughs> it's a pretty big margin of price. Look at her. I don't think it's plumping, but it looks really juicy and delightful. So like, who cares? And this color, mm -hmm. uh, right? Yeah, I have the new one from Girl On My Cart too, but like this isn't $40, okay? It's vaguely sweet. It's not so sweet that you wanna eat it, but if it gets in your mouth, you're not offended kind of thing. I think they should all be like that. And it smells exactly like dead ringer Hawaiian punch. Wow, that was a ride. <laughs> Let me spray my face and then we will chat. Oh my God. And it's empty anyway. I just hit my head for no reason. Oh my god, ow. Well, you know what they say. F*** them. <laughs> Alright, let's chat about everything here. I am mad that I'm not mad at this product. I should be mad at this product. We should all be mad at this product because they just set out to do something that was kind of visually gimmicky. You would think that they would phone it in after that, but gosh darn it, milk makeup. It seems pretty nice. And I'm not even really a primer girly. I really just hit my head very hard. It hurts a lot. Right in my brain stem. Hope that doesn't do any long-term damage. Yeah, I mean, primers kind of usually over-promise and under-deliver, let's be real. And so the fact that this is like, kind of just like not promising much and then like delivering more than it promised kind of thing. I'm just like, that's not so bad. Like that's kind of, that's kind of fun. It's kind of neat. And it made my skin look and feel really like dewy and springy and bouncy and also a little bit tacky for my makeup. Like I'm mad that I'm not mad, but they are the originators of the Hydro Grip Primer. It's not like they don't know primers. Does the Hydro Grip please me? Not always, not always me gusta, because it tends to put this layer on your face that like, yes, it makes your makeup go on really smoothly, but it's because it makes your makeup into this mask that's kind of like levitating off of your face and it's a little bit surreal after a while. And so I feel like it, you know, they know what they're doing with a primer and maybe it just needs to be less because that one's like so intensely like thick that I don't know. I don't know, maybe it's just the Hydro Grip really thinned down and put in a foam bottle. And if that's the case, I'm here for it. God, I hate, it's like I take truth serum. I get on camera and I just have to tell you how I feel. Even when I didn't want to like that at all. <laughs> Darn it, well, this one's easy. Pass. Pass. Y'all have known the whole time that this is a pass. I, this is the case of like, I know if I got the right shade, I would still be like, why? You know what I mean? Like, I just don't think that I would care because it's $81. And like, if it doesn't even come close to knocking my socks off in a shade that isn't ideal for me, it doesn't come close for $81. And the Prada Reveal Foundation exists. <laughs> and the entire line of Chanel exists. Gucci has yet to wow me with a complexion product. Like, do I use their concealer? Yes. Is it worth $50? No. Their foundations have been really bananas. Like, I ordered the neutral shade and it was like, green. I gave it to my friend who is olive undertoned and it matched her perfectly. Gucci has lost the plot. 
I don't know if they ever had the plot on complexion products, so this is no exception. I'm very unimpressed. And it's a shame because what a pretty compact. I wonder if I could just pull all this out of there and like use it as a mirror. I would just travel with that pretty little compact. The YSL bronzer. I kind of surprised myself with this today because it's... <laughs> grabs an eyeshadow palette. All right, Khaki, where's the bronzer? <laughs> the, br <laughs> the bronzer? It's really very lovely. It's just very, n almost not even a bronzer for me. Oh, <gasps> wait. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, where do I swatch it? Wait, there they are right next to each other. This is the YSL. And this is a lighter shade in the Victoria Beckham matte bronzing brick. So like the way that I use that underneath my eyes and I only use one side of the matte bronzing brick, perhaps this is an entire pan of that color. Holy crap. This video is so winding, but I'm using so many new products. Of course it's winding. Okay, grabbing this on a Sigma Soft Sculpt F11, also known as 11. Yeah, I would say that that it's a little deeper, a little bit, but it does about the same thing as the Victoria Beckham in terms of like canceling out the brightness under my eyes by kind of like blending my powders. Time will tell if it's as sophisticated of a formula, but just knowing that it's an option is pretty cool. Let's talk about these RMS blushes because again, this is not a new formula. Neither of them is a new formula, but these are both new shades to me and I had been like dying to have these. And my God, <laughs> They just give me really good feelings when I use them, especially together. You know, there's just makeup you get excited to use and it's like food that begs to be eaten. Like these beg to be used because the colors are just so freaking enticing. They work in concert with one another so beautifully. Like this is such a great pop on top of this. This is a little match made in heaven. I'm so happy with it. Like this is my new little warm weather combo. Cause y'all saw like versus the joy shade in the rare beauty, I could just slam this on. I was never worried about it overbuilding and getting too shimmery and looking like eyeshadow. I would recommend this, you know, I just recommend that. And then this is just like, I don't have a blush that's that color. That's just so unabashedly, unapologetically like neon coral. Mm. It just looks like watermelon candy. I love it. Okay, so the Persona eyeshadows, I want to give them like a 100% glowing review. I love how this eye look turned out and they were really easy to use, but I have to give them like an 85% glowing review just because they will eventually overbuild and start cracking in about three coats. Yes, I was able to get something really beautiful out of them, but if, I, if you're too enthusiastic, they will betray you. All the Sigma stuff, y'all already knew I love it. I wouldn't necessarily say that like this is my new favorite powder, but it's a pretty good powder. It's just a little bit more like mattifying than I would typically use, but obviously this is a little bit more mattified of a face than I would typically do. I just wanted to go in with a lot more powders in general. So if you need a little more oil control, if you're kind of like medium combo or whatever, the Sigma is great. It's really, really great. It's very pretty. I would say that it's kind of like a loose version of the Kosas, but slightly more oil controlling. And then the lips. I mean, come on. Like that was just such a layup. And what's interesting is I haven't loved everything that I've tried from them. Like their skincare is, I feel like again, kind of youth oriented, not strong enough for me. And then all the kind of like face glaze things. I guess I'm not a face glaze girly. They're fine. They're fine. Whereas this, I've gotten excited to put it on every single day, especially in combination with the RMS blushes. What do I do with things? <laughs> Cause I mean, look at this. Like how does a coral loving human not get excited about all of those things together? It's just such a combo. It's just a little kit. And I know I'm a broken record about coral blushes lately, but you know what? I can talk about a formula all day long. And then I just pick the color that I like, <laughs> okay? They're all different formulas. I don't talk about the formulas, but I don't know if I have color that I like, gosh darn it. So there them's the them's the thoughts, fam. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I need to like, I think it's the combination of a nutritious lunch and I, I had like five or six of those vanilla meringues from Trader Joe's. 
I'm gonna go have some more. Anyway, this face of makeup is cute as hell and I'm really happy with it and I hope that y'all liked this. I hope it was a fun way to waste some time. <laughs> if you did, please do give the video a thumbs up. If you're new here and you just suffered through all of that and you're still here, subscribe. It doesn't get worse than this. You've endured as bad as it gets. Subscribe! And I'll put a video up here that I think you'll enjoy if you liked this one that you can watch next. And I love y'all so much. My current subscribers, thank you for putting up with me. You're the best and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!